Welcome back everyone here at CBSA. We are continuing to celebrate Pride Month as we go beyond the rainbow to shine a light on the impact that the San Diego Black Coalition has on the community. For a total of eight years, the coalition has been creating spaces for anyone whose intersecting identities include black and LGBTQ to gather, connect, and exist together while engaging in the larger San Diego community. Joining us live this morning, the longest serving executive board member, Terrell Harris, who is the current treasurer to talk about his experience in the work he does as well as just being black and LGBTQ in San Diego. Yeah. I want to start off with that. Um, yeah. Intersectionality is such a an interesting topic mm -hmm. because I feel like uh, people who may not be of color may have one of the identities mm -hmm. that other people share, but bringing in race, bringing in religion, mm -hmm. it adds a whole nother layer to things, right? Yes, it does. Yeah. So tell us what it's like, I mean, what your organization does specifically, the coalition, in supporting people of color. Yeah, I mean, overall, we look to find safe space for black queer people in San Diego. Um, but th the main thing is, you know, if you can't create space for black people in general, mm -hmm. it's that much more difficult when you're talking about black queer folks. Mm -hmm. And what happens a lot of times, and not just unique to San Diego, is that when a space is created exclusively for uh, the LGBTQ community, uh, people of color and black people in particular are usually left out of yeah. that equation. Uh, we don't get a seat at the table. And so uh, it creates a situation in which you have an already marginalized group of people that are pushed even uh, further to the boundary, uh, yeah. so to speak. And so it creates uh, an environment where we're subject to another level of uh, potential discrimination at work or uh, bullying in, in the school. Uh, less access to resources. And so uh, the work that we do uh, in the coalition is to basically bridge that gap and ultimately create an environment just like anybody else where a place like San Diego can be not just where you dwell or where you live, but you can really call a place like that home. I feel like it was like growing up gay, I and being a person of color, but also not really, I'm, I'm mixed, so mm -hmm. I never really s knew where I stood or felt like I was mm -hmm. identifying as part of a community. I didn't know where I stood in being gay. And so I feel like having community members who you mm -hmm. can talk to and to help you identify mm -hmm. it is helpful. You know, being able to talk with other people about their experiences where they're on the spectrum, you know, yeah. it, it make it, it just I think makes things so much easier for people mm -hmm. to be able to have those conversations. Yeah, and I think ultimately, just like anyone else, people just need a place to yeah. fit in, right? Uh, to exist, and you know what you're seeing is, um, you know, that that ability to just do that is under siege right now, and so. Uh, you know, we when we come together, you know, in community, we can share those, you know, similar lived experiences to be able to figure out how to navigate, you know, through through a community like San Diego. Uh, how long have you been on the board, and what's it been like? <laughs> so <The> longest serving <laughs> member, <laughs> I am. Uh, I've been a part of the organization for five years. I've okay. been a member of the leadership team for four of those five years. Um, and, uh, you know, the growth experience for me has been uh, exponential. Uh, this is uh, coming from the East Coast about five years ago. Uh, this is the first community that I've really, you know, invested myself into yeah. in this kind of way. Uh, I've always been a part of, of a community, but to actually be an agent for change was a, was something completely new for me. And in a predominantly white community, right? Uh, that's correct. In a predominantly white community where, you know, you literally come here and you're kind of looking for others that look like you, that move like you, that socialize in similar ways right. as you, even though, you know, that the, we are at different intersections, uh, you know, on our journeys, that that similar experience is something that we all seek to find here. You guys have some events coming up. Could you tell us where people can find more info, what kind of events you're going to be having? Yeah, so this is uh, going to be our fourth, I believe, annual yeah, Black Friday. that's right. So, that's exciting. Uh, it is exciting because you go to other cities where, you know, they've been having black prides for a while. For decades, so you're yeah, exactly. Certainly surprised sort of to see a place like San Diego wouldn't have one, but um, uh, we have a series of events coming up uh, starting next Thursday. Okay. Um, you can find information on our website, uh, San Diego Black Coalition.org. Uh, we have uh, an opening mixer on Thursday. Okay. We're doing a ball on Friday. 
And then Saturday, we're doing uh, like a variety, like musical festival. Um, and then Sunday, it will end with a pool party. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you for being with us this morning. We appreciate it. You guys are doing amazing work. And we appreciate so many members of your team coming on and talking with us and sharing with our viewers. So it means a lot to us. Thank you for having us. Of course. All right. We'll be right back after this. Stay with us.